Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 43. Uh, Hacks, Honors, and Baby Yoda. Kevin. I'm your host, <laughs> Joseph Whalen, and my astute and energetic co-host, Michelle Whalen. Wow, look at that. Well, I wrote the, that last night. And I didn't realize you wouldn't be very energetic this morning, so <laughs> stretching here. There, for there was hope. There was hope somewhere. <laughs> Just not happening. <laughs> So today we have a lot of Disney news, actually. Today we'll be talking about Disney Plus getting hacked, and I'll add my own little rant rant in from our experience last night. Mm -hmm. We have some information on our stars from Frozen 2, which we will be seeing this weekend. We have some uh, information on merchandising for The Mandalorian. <laughs> Uh, then we have some honors uh, laid out for John Williams, uh, our favorite Star Wars composer. Then in our entertainment news, we have some uh, uh, some words of wisdom from uh, William uh, Willem Dafoe from Aquaman uh, stardom. <clears throat> then we have uh, Michael Jackson. And his lawsuits once again coming back into the news, mm -hmm. that story that never dies. And then we have some sad news about a show that we enjoy uh, kind of being on hiatus for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week. Uh, ready to get going? Sure. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. go for Disney Detective. So in our first story, Disney Plus is obviously having lots of issues still, which we even got to encounter uh, last night. So obviously everybody's been waiting for the launch of it, and then it was discovered uh, earlier this week by ZDNet that thousands of Disney Plus accounts have already been hijacked and placed on sale on forums by hackers within less than a week of it debuting. Um, enterprising hackers have been reselling the accounts from anywhere from $3 to $11, while obviously the cost is, it's not you know, much margin there, <laughs> really, is there? Yeah, you're not, you're not really making a whole lot unless you're, you know, hijacking a whole lot. And, you know, basically people were posting on, on Twitter, um, basically, you know, saying it's not even been a week and a half and my Disney account has already been hacked, you know, great security there. Unbelievable. So really didn't say how many you know, in this article, it didn't talk about how many people or, or what was happening, um, you know, just that their accounts were, you know, the passwords were being hacked and and people were, were reselling, you know, their accounts. Again, nothing from Disney on it, nothing about how many, just that, you know, it was already happening. So, Well, what I find interesting is Disney's one of the... Um more restrictive mm -hmm. streaming providers where right. they're locking you down to four devices. Mm -hmm. So that in a way kind of makes hijacking these rather difficult. Right. And it's fairly inexpensive. So there's not a lot of money to be right. made. Right. You're with not it. making a, a whole lot off of it, especially if you're selling it at $3. Right. You know, okay, it costs seven. You're, you're so. Yeah. And I would be interested to know exactly how they're hacking it. Is there an issue with hashing the passwords? Is right. there a uh, vector into the Disney Plus system that's causing issues? And I'd also be curious to know if the hacking of accounts is what's causing a problem with the service disruptions they're running into. That could be too. And it also seems like it's what you know and and as you were going to rant you know it seemed like it's not every 
thing, you know, like we were having a problem with the Apple TV. We use Apple TV to to connect to it, and that's where our problem seemed to stem from. And then we were having issues when we were trying to get the app on our phone to work. And then once I turned off the Wi-Fi on my phone, then we were, you know, using the data plan on, on our phone, we were able to get through to it, you know. And then I, I have friends who haven't had any issues with it. And then this morning, we had no issues getting on, you know, the app. So where, you know, where does it stem from? What, you know, what's the common denominator? Is there one? Well, yeah. and, and that's the thing. Like with most streaming providers, what happens is there's usually – take Netflix, for instance. Mm-hmm. There's a partnership between the streaming provider and the ISPs where the streaming provider will actually put a caching server inside the ISP's network. And what that's designed to do is cache what people are streaming on on the network itself mm-hmm. right? so you don't have to egress outside the network to the distribution, content distribution network. To pull that down. So if we go to watch, I don't know, let's say The Mandalorian. So if we do that on Comcast through a Com- uh, Comcast modem, Comcast would stream it down to their box inside their network. And we'd be watching and then it through them. Everyone else would, when they went to go watch uh, the same program, they'd be streaming it from that box rather than streaming it from the Disney Plus content distribution network. Mm-hmm. What I suspect, based on what we saw here, is that there might have been some throttling being done by um, Comcast, in our case, mm. where Comcast was actually causing the disruption. However, those I, bastards. I do have a graphic <laughs> up now dun, dun, on the computer dun. here from a website that I use called Down Detector. And if you look at this, the trend lines that we see here kind of show that a lot of people are having problems during primetime hours. Right, right. The drop-off of reports come around the the 3 a.m. mark in the morning. So you need to wake up early to watch your new episodes on Disney+. Plus. Well, and what this tells me is this is most likely an issue with the content distribution network and the throttling that Disney actually is going through right now. Okay. I haven't done the research to see what CDN they're using at this point in time. Mm-hmm. A lot of people use, you know, there's there's like three or four major ones out there, Akamai and a few others that people use for CDNs. And it's entirely possible that Disney simply doesn't have enough resources, judging from this graph, mm-hmm. that they need to actually support the load that they have. Okay. And, uh, and, and really that's unfortunate because – Given the subscribership that they had for this Mm -hmm. and the advanced subscribers they had, Disney should have been well aware of the load that they were going to incur on this, and they should have had more than enough resources allocated ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Um, This is extremely frustrating when you get home on a Friday night from work and you want to go watch the new shows that dropped, and you can't. Right. What's the point of paying for a service that I can't use? Mm -hmm. Um, And this is kind of indicative of... You know, poor planning that Disney has had many times in the past with mark uh, merchandising. You know, we're we've got uh, Frozen Two coming out this weekend. When the first movie of Frozen came out, Disney had absolutely no merchandising available. So you had parents that were frustrated, children that were upset, and you know, you go back and you look at how they they handle some of the park rides. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they like they overplanned. The Star Wars launch and people stayed away because of how bad right. their other launches were and how long away the lines were. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this doesn't come as a surprise that Disney launched a service that's not working correctly. This goes back, as, as you well know, all the way back to the launch, the opening of Disneyland when Disneyland was flooded. Uh, beyond capacity and, mm-hmm. and couldn't handle the the launch on its day back in right. f- 1951? 50, 55. 55. So Disney has a history of poorly planning these launches like this and not devoting the resources. And it, it strikes me as odd, especially considering Disney's got more money than God. So if anybody can throw money at a problem, it's Disney and they're not right. doing it. Yeah. <clears throat> then we sat on the on hold for 
15 minutes trying to report a problem and never even had our yeah, call nobody, picked up. Right. And then we basically streamed it from your phone. Yeah, we, we it, had to you know. find a workaround. And that's yeah. that's unacceptable. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know they're not charging a lot for the service right now, but right. it's Disney. And Disney makes enough money that they can do it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's our our my rant on Disney Plus right now. Okay. So Frozen 2, tell us about our <laughs> Frozen 2 news. So obviously, as we've mentioned, Frozen 2 opens this weekend. We will be seeing it tomorrow. Um, it's kind of interesting. The The reviews have been kind of mixed. Um, you have obviously diehard Disney fans who loved it. I had one friend who actually saw it on a preview last weekend, um, and she said there's you know a lot of little... Uh, inside jokes, uh, some 80s references for certain, you know, for of certain things like for the parents and other little, you know, Easter eggs that she couldn't really talk about because obviously the movie hadn't um, officially come out. And then there are others that are like, yeah, it was kind of boring, but, you know, obviously we'll know more uh, tomorrow. Uh, as we see it. Um, but the story that we're talking about uh, is that the two stars, Kristen Bell and Adina Menzel, actually got stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame um, <clears throat> uh, this past week. Uh, it was actually on Tuesday. Uh, it was a double honor uh, or a dual honor um, where both stars actually got their own uh, stars. Um, they actually, uh, Mandel, uh, Menzel actually said she thought they were actually going to be sharing a star together, not realizing that they were going to get two stars, you know, right next to each other. Um, so this was kind of, you know, uh, a sweet and, and nice, uh, uh, honor for, for both of them. Um, uh, Kristen actually had said, uh, there are real moments that make a career and, there are real moments that make a life. Um, and obviously they had just experienced a real moment earlier that day when a group of protesters showed up um, before the, the festivities. Um, but everything went off without a hitch. And um, uh, Menzel actually had said about um, when she was 15, she had actually taken a trip to New York and had taken a picture of Barbara Streisand's star, um, you know, oh, of nice. herself next to it. So, you know, even as 15 year old self, it was, you know, never imagining that one day she'd be there. So, you know, as you know, corny as, you know, it could be, you know, it, it does give you something, you know, for, for people, you know, something to kind of look up to and, you know, maybe one day I'll be, you know, there type thing. So it was a cool little thing. Obviously both women have been very busy along with, you know, the rest of the cast, um, promoting, you know, the film there's been, you know, they've been all over the place. Um, I was telling you, you know, about uh, the, the little frozen, you know, crosswalk thing that James Gordon had, oh, right, had right, done. Right, yeah. and, you know, so it, it's all over the place. You're definitely going to, you know, see it all over the place. And like you were just saying, you know, the merchandise has been out, you know, for for it seems like a month already. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Disney definitely got ahead of this one here. Yeah. And yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how the, the, the movie goes and, and how, how all that is. So cool. Very cool. Then we have Mandalorian news. So on the reverse side of having a lot of merchandise out and whatever, uh, we're going to talk about the Mandalorian. Obviously now it's, we're the third episode has dropped. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's probably because you don't have Disney Plus. But obviously, the spoiler alert. The spoiler been alert. At this point. It's it's been three weeks already. Um, basically, the the big news was baby quote unquote Yoda. Kevin. Um, <laughs> You know, like everybody, you know, and, and there's so many different memes out there, which, you know, every day there's another funny one, um, you know, where, you know, basically the, the one and why we call Kevin is that, you know, basically, yes, we know it's not baby Yoda. We don't know what his name is yet. We don't know what the species is. We don't is. know the species. We know so we it's... we got to call him something, We right? know he's related, you know, in some way, shape or form related to Yoda. He's the same coloring. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl. So we're just going to call it baby Yoda. And then in the one meme, it's, it's fine. We're just going to call him baby Kevin. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, they don't help themselves by by 
putting him in the same colored robes, too. Right, exactly. So you kind of allude right. to Right, so you that, have, yeah. obviously, there's tons of different fan, you know, theories out there. Is he a clone? Is he, you know, an offshoot? Was or he a Horcrux. A Horcrux and all this. But basically, you know, what, what this article is talks about why there were no toys, and it was because they didn't want to spoil anything. Right. Because obviously every time there's a new movie or something, you have all these, you know, toys that come out ahead of it, a.k.a., you know, the, the you know, uh, just like, you know, with Frozen and, and stuff like yeah. that. And they didn't want to because everybody then was going to know the spoiler to it and well and star wars has been been notorious for this since force awakens because right. so much information was coming out right from the toy lines that they had right that it was spoiling you know plot lines and stuff like right. that. right and and being someone that works in a manufacturing industry and knowing how long it takes products to not only get to the stores to be bought and how far ahead you have to order them and how far ahead you have to make them, you know, to, to be able to keep this a secret, you know, because there are a number of stories coming out now that basically within the next couple of weeks, yes, Baby Yoda merchandise is, or Baby whatever, is going to be right. coming to light. So you figure, you know, other people have known about it you know, months in advance, and they've obviously had to keep it quiet up until, you know, this moment. Well, so, And, you know, I, I've been known from time to time to criticize Disney for mm -hmm. their, their greed and money grabbing and raising prices and stuff like that. And this one is kind of the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. They could have been making a fortune off of this up until mm -hmm. now. After yeah. the first episode of Mandalorian, they could have been selling these, like, hot Oh, cakes. yeah. And uh, they made the the conscious decision to hold off so that it wouldn't spoil things for the fans. And kudos to them for that. Not to say that they're not going to make a ridiculous oh, amount no. of money, you know, at this point now they release it. if you look on Twitter, if you look on Facebook, if you look on any social media, everyone is like, oh, my God, I want one. I yeah. need one. I need to have one. When does this come into my life? And These I are going to be, you know, <laughs> Baby Yodas are going to be the Porgs from yeah. Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. And and we have a Porg because he's just really but cute. And he, he won't taste as good fried, He won't though. taste I don't know. Baby Yoda might look at him. Mm, you know, I do like chicken. <laughs> he likes frogs too. I right, right. I was gonna say so, he likes yeah. frogs. So, <coughs> so we should expect our our baby Yodas to be in the store probably uh, before, before Christmas. Before probably. Christmas, yeah. And and what was also interesting in the article was um, one of the stars was was talking about watching you know because it, it is a puppet it's not cgi right. you know it is a, and you can tell it has that realistic yeah, it, look it has that it. Or, original yoda you know from the original trilogy yeah. versus you know the newer trilogy look to it and he said it was just amazing to watch like the the facial expression you know there were two puppeteers doing it one was doing the eyes one was doing the ears and and he said you know it just it looked like a little baby, yeah. you know, so, yeah, so very, very cute and definitely, um, you know, and, and Carl, Carl Weathers was actually one, you know, he, he says he has his own name. He's, you know, very interesting and very knowledgeable and very cute. He says, and I never use that word, but he's a cute little guy. Yeah. Um, so obviously we, you know need to keep watching to, to find out, you know, more of his, his story. And we story, did. We so. watched Friday's episode, and Friday's episode was very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on so many different levels. And then, obviously, the Baby Yoda aspect just made it cute and adorable. Absolutely. So, so sticking with Star Wars-related See, news, look, look how I kind of just... That was, that was almost like you planned it that it way. It was like, almost like I did it. So our favorite composer john williams nabs his 71st grammy nomination 58 years after his first um so when the grammy uh nominations came out it now brings his total to 71 and actually 24 wins to date so williams was nominated for composing and um is nominated in 
uh, composing and arranging. Um, so it's for actually Galaxy's Edge Symphonic Suite, which he wrote for the Star Wars themed land, <clears throat> excuse me, in Disneyland. And he's also uh, was nominated for Best Instrumental Composition, while his arrangement, uh, Hedgewig themed, the best known piece from Harry Potter's uh, films, was also cited for uh, instrumental arrangement. So he got two nominations, so his 70, 70th and 71st, um, and it's his, he has, you know, a 58-year history, um, you know, basically going back to 1961 when he uh, scored the um, uh, uh, the TV score for Checkmate, um, obviously, Henry Mancini um, is also up there with nominations. He ended up with uh, 72 nominations. And Quincy Jones is actually the champ of them all with 80 nominations in, you know, in total. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So, yeah, you know, between films and television shows and... I um, loved his show, Quincy, too. <laughs> that was... Not that wasn't him. No, that wasn't oh, him. Okay, um, so. And he actually had uh, 28 wins uh, total. Um, so, you know, kind of cool that, you know, while Star Wars, you know, the Star Wars films are, you know, or at least the original sagas are, are coming to a close, you know, he's still, you know, being, you know, nominated. And who's to say that, you know, next year after, you know, um, Rise of Skywalker comes out, he doesn't end up, you know, with another one. Um, it was actually the, the music for uh, Galaxy's Edge was recorded in Abbey Road's theater uh, in August of 2018. Um, and he, you know, was monitoring. He wasn't there while they were um, performing it. He was actually monitoring it um, from Massachusetts where... They watched um, it on YouTube? <laughs> yeah, he watched it on YouTube. He streamed it on Twitch. <laughs> Just like we do. <laughs> Who knew? So, you know, so when the uh, awards come out, it'll be very cool if he, you know, gets another win, you know, in his hat. But if not, we know hopefully there'll be, you know, some more nominations coming his way. Okay. Very cool. And I think that's all we had for Disney Detective this that week. That is it for the Disney stuff. All right. Let's move on to entertainment news. So tell us about Willem Dafoe and and why he's down on superhero movies. Well, he's not really down on on superhero movies, so to speak. Um, so he's actually part of the Martin Scorsese's film, The Irishman. But obviously, he's also known for being part of superhero movies as well. Obviously, being the former Green Goblin um, and being uh, in in Aquaman as well. Um, he was a really good Green Goblin. By yeah, the way. yeah, and because he, he just has that evil. They didn't have to make a mask for him. He right. had the face for it. Yeah, he he has that you know look about him. Uh, he said you have to have fun with some of the things that you do uh, because there's a lot of hardware, there's lots of crazy crane shots and all those things, but it's fun. Um, but stuff is overshot. They spend a lot of money on big set pieces because that's what delivers the action. And you know they they're too noisy. But let's not get into this. You know, I don't want to bite the hand that feeds me. But seriously, folks, looks, you know, those movies aren't what I run to. So he's obviously not, you know, a fan of the big giant noisy, you know, type, you know, how he describes, you know, superhero movies. He, you know, he likes to, you know, go into a dark movie theater and, you know, be with strangers and have the suspense and, and things like that. So, you know, he kind of, he's kind of on the fence between, you know, like, obviously I star in, in them and, you know, pays my bill. As long as he keeps cutting <clears throat> the checks, he'll still do the movies. Right, exactly. You know, he says that films have, have changed, you know, over time. You know, he goes, you know, it it's just how the culture kind of changes. And you have to be that forward-looking person and go with, you know you know, where the changes. He says, I'm old fashioned in the fact that nothing beats sitting in a dark room with a bunch of strangers, watching a light on a screen and having the experience. He says, I think as everyone gets punched out from too much stuff on TV and too many choices, they're going to want that. Um, you know, so it, it, it was interesting because he could kind of see 
both sides of the the fence like you know and i guess that's also why there's so many different types of movies out there you know if you you know want to see the action superhero movie you can and if you don't want to you can go and see the downton abbey you know movie or if you need a kids movie to go see there's always or you can go see a mafia movie there's always a mafia movie to see and and give martin scorsese some time and there'll be a mafia mafia movie out there too so okay all right so he wasn't as bad as as scorsese's been no no he he was kind of yeah he, he i think he he knows because he he plays in both Right, you know, like he has to. Well, and that's the thing when you're getting your bills paid by both <coughs> sides, you kind of have yeah. to play diplomat with it. And you know, and that's fine. And obviously, neither one is hurting, you know, at this point. Exactly. So, so let's drag Michael Jackson back into the mud again. Here, well, we've we been could. talking about this for for ages now. So, a California appeals court. Uh, appeared strongly inclined on Monday to give new life to the lawsuit that was filed by the two men who accused Michael Jackson of molesting them when they were boys. So three judges from the Second District Court of Appeals said in a tentative ruling that the lawsuits against the two corporate entities that Jackson owned should be uh, reconsidered by trial that the court dismissed them in 2017. So basically there was the documentary that came out, and, you know, these two now men, you know, accused, you know, Michael Jackson of molesting them. Basically, you know, it was a back and forth with the trial, statute of limitation, blah, 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 blah. And now they've basically, um, you know, the, the court has come back and said, no, we're going to open up this case again. And and we're going to, you know, now, see where it I goes. I hope so. that they're going to open these back up because there's some legal merit or some new information that came out. I really hope they're not opening these back up just because a documentary came out and there's a chance to get some more press. Right, right. Or because there's, you know, there's some sort of popular push because of a documentary. Uh, I, I hate to see that sort of thing driving the legal process. Right, right. If there's a legitimate legal reason, if new evidence came to light, um, then, you know, by all means, right. pick it up, you know, and pursue it mm-hmm. to its its full end. But... I hope they're not doing it just as a publicity stunt. Yeah, and and hopefully again, it, it's some closure for for these for these two, you know, and and maybe others that you know never came forward and and. And that's yeah. the thing, I, I, you know. If nothing else comes out of this, I hope it empowers other victims out there mm-hmm. to have the well. And I think the that's, courage and the freedom. That's to come the forward. whole thing, you know. They were, you know, they were young at the time, young boys. Now they're thirty-seven and, and forty-one. And by saying, oh, statute of limitation, you know, that makes someone, you know, that could be in their 50s or 60s, oh, well, I don't want to come forward, you know, or it's been so long. No, you should, you know, that's where the laws need to change. And, you know, no matter when you were wronged, no matter what well, the statute of limitation, you know. The, that's, the reason the statute of limitations is in there is because of the degradation of evidence over mm-hmm, time. Right, where it's impossible and I get that. to prove it. However, <coughs> there are certain crimes that don't have a statute of limitations. Right. This should by right, far exactly. be one of them. That, and that that's kind of my point is that why, you know, why should there you know, be that on top right. of it. Absolutely. You know, you this were, is this this is such right. a heinous crime mm-hmm. that, you know, this stands up there next to murder. You're mm-hmm. you're you're stealing someone's life in mm-hmm. crimes like this. So there's yeah. absolutely no reason why there should be a, a statute of limitations. Mm-hmm. It makes you know, granted the the proof of evidence and right. the viability of it evidence, harder. it makes it difficult to prove right. it further on. But it doesn't make it any less of a crime. Right. You know, and in this case, you know, Michael Jackson can't speak for himself. He's been gone a while now. So it's. it's and in most cases, you know, in most cases like these, the the accused is never going to take the stand. So right. that can't be a reason to say, you know, right. we can't pursue this. Mm-hmm. Um they're clearly not going to get any kind of vindication from a right. an accuser to a offender or right. victim standpoint. Right, right. Um, but that's not to say that they shouldn't get some level of justice out of it. Right, this. and sometimes just coming forward and having their day in court 
you know, and having other people believe them again, Absolutely. even though they're never going to be able to face him and 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 have, you know, a jury look at him and go, yeah, you were guilty. Just that that vindication, you know, might... and the and the example that it sets for other people mm-hmm. who don't feel empowered. Right. And are intimidated, you know, to see someone come out against a public figure like mm-hmm. this after so many years. Right. And get a judgment in your favor is enough to empower victims to come forward to come forward mm-hmm. and seek justice and for the predators out there to think twice before they prey on victims mm-hmm. again. Yep. So tell us about Mind Hunter. So Mind Hunter happens to be one of our favorite shows uh from Netflix, but it seems like we might have to wait a little while for uh season 3. So the show has been on uh since 2017. Uh season 2 came out uh over the summer, I guess it was. Um and now it seems that you know, they were kind of putting things into place for season 3, but the uh director that they got to um, do the next season, unfortunately has such a busy schedule coming up, um, that now they're not even sure when the next season, uh, will come to light. Um, so it looks like, um, you know, based off of everything else that he, that he has, uh, coming up that we're looking at maybe a 2022 release at the earliest, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, this last season uh, that just came out actually ended up being a huge development. Um, for those of you that, that don't watch the show, there was a, a lot of um, storyline was held around uh, Atlanta, children that were being um, abducted and murdered. Right. And, you know, what you found out, you know, if you didn't already know the story was basically these were cold cases, you know, in most cases there hadn't been anybody found, you know, no new information, but because of the show, when it came out, it actually had a huge development in the, the murder cases and that there's actually been a bunch of new things that have come to light. And it's really from, you know, the show opening up people's eyes about it. Um, you know, that, that, the Atlanta mayor and the Atlanta, you know, police chief were looking at new evidence to try and, and figure out what had happened, you know, so many years ago. So, and again, like we were talking about in the last ep- uh, article, mm-hmm. you know, it's exposure, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. this show has raised awareness. It's, it's raised exposure to these things and just raising exposure mm-hmm. decades later right. has led to more interest in investigation. Right. So, you know, so kudos to them for, for helping to, to bring light to, to, you know, these cold cases. It's unfortunate that, you know, that we're going to have to, to wait a while. Um, but what's kind of funny is that for us in, in the U.S., we're so used to, you know, seasons coming up and, you know, very quickly, you know, yeah, or within a, a year, model you know, that's, that that's how to. we're used to. Whereas if you look at like the U.K., you know, the way that they do their series are, are completely different. You know, their s- seasons are, are much shorter um, and they'll go three three or four years in between, you know, look at, you know, like Sherlock, yeah, um, you yeah, know, how, you know, it's like a year and a half between, um, you know, seasons. And a lot of it's because of the actors being part of other things or, you know, they're just taking their time, you know, writing and, you know, and, and getting everybody, you know, everybody's schedule to line up, you know, even doctor who, you know, we kind of got used to yeah. the doctor who's, you know, every year there would be a new doctor who, and that's not how BBC, you know, well, but like, runs. I don't so. know why they don't take why Netflix doesn't take a take a page out of Disney's book here and replace the director. Disney has a has a habit of changing <laughs> directors like I change socks, you right. know. And that's and that's the other thing too is, you know, there's so many different directors out there. Why? Oh, okay, you know, like if and and that's the like you said, how many times has, you know, directors changed, you know, mid production of something? Here you haven't even started doing anything exactly. yet. Exactly. There, there's not somebody that's yeah, I mean, in at Disney home not doing anything. Disney gets two thirds of the way through a project and changes <laughs> their director. Change 
So again, you know, may, maybe something will happen and, and they'll, you know, move up the dates. But as of right now, it looks like we, we have to wait a little while to, to see our, our serial killers come back. <laughs> I hate waiting. <laughs> I know. But there's so much other stuff to watch. It's true. That is true. Speaking of which, we're going to talk about some of that when we come back with our insightful picks of the week. <laughs> Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick comes from <gasps> Disney Plus. <laughs> I know. Big shocker. Big shocker. Um, and it's actually a story. Uh, this must a have show. been one of the ones you actually were able to watch it, right? <laughs> This morning, as a matter of fact, um, it's called the Imagineering Story. This was actually one that we had talked about in in our Disney news a couple weeks back uh, before Disney Plus even launched. And it sounded like it was definitely going to be a show that was going to be something that would definitely pique my interest and yours as well. And obviously... Um, it has. So the show is focused on the Walt Disney Imagineers and uh, takes an in-depth look into the history and the creation of Walt Disney theme parks and attractions around the world. Um, just like all the other original Disney uh, television shows, uh, there's only three episodes out right now. Uh, we actually just finished watching episode two. Um, and it's it's interesting because again being the disney historian people that we kind of are you know we always look for that you know that new you know uh inside information type type thing um and what's happened over the years is a lot of times it's the same story that we've heard over and over like nothing new or or interesting and you know the we've only watched the first two episodes there's the new one that actually dropped yesterday that we haven't seen yet and it is interesting because there are those little tidbits that you know the most in-depth Disney person might not have known um, or the little side stories and you get to see video clips that you haven't seen and interviews that you've you know never heard before um, so the first episode basically talks about how Disneyland came to be and you know all the troubles that they had and and you know um, you know the the cement was still wet when the park opened so women you know who wore high heels all the time you know back in the 50s you know they were getting stuck um, and you know the problems do you have you know water fountains available or do you have restrooms available you know on opening day and and just these little you know tidbits of, of problems um and what was interesting was that in the you know second up episode it, it talks about the life of disney after walt's passing and you know how do we go on how do we move on what do we do next and you know they talk about getting um you know putting together walt disney world and all of that and then once disney world opened it was like okay well now what do we do and and they decided to to go with epcot and you know even though epcot wasn't what we have today is epcot wasn't what walt envisioned they kind of took some of what he wanted and and molded it and what we found interesting which we didn't realize was that tokyo disneyland was basically going on, you know, being constructed at the same time that Epcot was. Like, they opened within, what, six months of each other? Right, yeah. um, You know, and that was something that, you know, I didn't really know, you know, so it was interesting seeing, you know, all of that. In this episode, um, which was kind of the one that I was waiting to see, they had a lot of Haunted Mansion stuff and, you know, the the history behind... You like Haunted Mansion? Yeah. I, I didn't kinda, know that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, a little bit, I think. <laughs> you know, so it was interesting, again, you know, a lot of stuff on the Haunted Mansion I knew, but there were a lot of little things, you know, that I didn't know. So it was a very cool, you know, so if you're, you know, into Disney and, and you like learning about the history and how things came to be, it's a really good show. Each episode is about an hour long, um, lots of different interviews, lots of archival footage, um, you know, just, you know, we were, Ooh, I wonder how much that goes for. I wonder how much, yeah. you know, the original art of this is. And so really cool. You know, if you ever want to know, they're going to have another auction after this episode where we're asking those questions. <laughs> right, Cause that's, what's going to happen. So if you like finding out the backstory behind, you know, your favorite rides or attractions or, you know, even just, you know, the the whole idea that, you know, Walt Disney World is its own little, you know, quote unquote 
country and that, you know, no place else in the world is as organized, you they know. They have their own Navy. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's pretty awesome. Um, you know, so if that's, you know, your type of thing, definitely check it out, you know, obviously if you have Disney+. Plus. So Okay, very cool pick. I agree because I watch it with you. So. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very, very good pick. Well, thank you. So my pick this week is from another uh, recent addition to the streaming wars here, and that is For All Mankind, streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. The first crewed mission to the moon during the space race in the late 1960s was a global success for NASA in the United States, but this drama answers the question, what if the space race had never ended? Dun, dun, dun. In an, oh, I should have had that keyed up. I didn't See. have it keyed up. In an alternate timeline, the USSR beats the U.S. to the moon, thus setting its first Russian cosmonaut, Alexei Leonov, on the moon. Dubbed as Red Moon, this event leaves NASA in devastation. This doesn't mean those working there have given up as they challenge the Soviet Union a second time to show that there's no giving up on hope. So this has been described as Man in the High Tower meets Apollo 11. Okay. Now, I've not watched Man in the High Tower, right, so it's an alternate universe type right, thing. Right, right. Um, and what's kind of interesting is, you know, we won the space race by landing on the moon first. The Apollo program went for a few more missions, but didn't really go as far as anyone hoped because of budget concerns. You know, we eventually turned to uh, the space shuttle program and hadn't left Earth orbit since then. So what this does is this postulates, you know, what happens if the Russians beat us there? Do we just give up like the Russians did? Um then the push became, you know, they postulate that if that happened, we would push for the next first, which would be mm-hmm. the first woman. And then the first moon base. And then the, the next thing and the next thing. And that, you know, the theory behind the show is really that lack of competition from another superpower basically made us, you know, take a step back and rest on our laurels there. And mm-hmm. as a result our space exploration efforts have, have taken a beating Mm -hmm. as a result. Um, you know, you figure we haven't aside from sending probes to Mars and, and, you know, various other places, our manned exploration hasn't gone anywhere, despite the fact that we are trying to get to Mars now. Uh, so the show itself works on that premise and it's a very well done show. It's, it has a very authentic feel to it. Um, you get the, Feel of the 60s and early 70s. They they have the wardrobes down. They mm-hmm. have the homes and the interior decorations mm. down. They have the cars. I mean, it's okay. it has a very genuine, authentic feel to it. Um, and you're introduced to a large cast of characters. So, you know, I mean, obviously you're introduced to all the Apollo astronauts. Okay. You're introduced to some of the key figures like uh, uh, Werner von Braun. Um, some of the controllers like um, uh, Deke Slayton. Um, so you get a lot of the personalities that were there. And then as the show progresses, you're introduced to these ancillary characters as they bring women in. So mm. the, the couple of episodes are very uh, female empowerment. Like, like it starts this female empowerment move early on. And, and just looking at the impact of that and how it would have affected the country and where things would stand now had that started when it did rather than 20 or so years later. Um, So it's, it's, it's got a very good feel to it. Um, My early concerns with the first couple of episodes was they had this, this drama that seemed kind of unnecessary that they were playing into it. And, um, and my concern when you take historical figures like this and you inject drama just for the sake of drama is it detracts from the story. And I was very relieved that a few episodes in, that drama starts to play into the plot and it makes a lot more sense and it drives the plot forward. Okay. Uh, So they do a very good job with the drama. Um, There's, I think there are five episodes in now, four episodes in to a 10 episode first season here. Uh, Drops on Fridays on Apple TV Plus. 
And I think it's a very good show. I think you'd enjoy it if you mm-hmm. watched it. Yeah, it's definitely something I wanted to, to watch. So. so, for All Mankind, streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. Good pick. And that is my pick. Um, Did we have any afterthoughts for this week? No, I don't think so. I did have a one programming note that I did mention. Uh, we tend to record these podcasts at some point in time <laughs> on the weekend. We don't usually have a... A scheduled time for insights into entertainment, and that's going to be changing. Uh, we're going to be moving to a regularly scheduled uh, live stream and recording time. Uh, I think we're shooting for Thursdays at 8. Is that correct? I think so. Probably not this coming Thursday since it's Thanksgiving. Right. But probably the Thursday after. So this coming, this next episode, we will be streaming at our regularly scheduled sometime on the weekend. <laughs> sometime um, over the weekend. And we do we will try to get some kind of notification out there as to what time, but the following weekend we're going to be moving to a regular schedule of 8 p.m. Eastern time on Thursdays where we will be recording and streaming live for everyone. Aside from that, we would love to get your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Or on Twitter at, at insights underscore things. You can get our uh, videos of all of our episodes on youtube.com slash insights into things. Or on the web at www.insightsintothings.com. Or the audio version of our podcast at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. Or on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. And one little thing that I did want to throw out there kind of as a tre- uh, tease with the holidays coming we do have a special project that we'll be working on Mm -hmm. that uh, we will be releasing around the holidays so Mm -hmm. look forward to that folks yep and that's it Uh, another one in the books all righty and we're out thanks a lot have a good one